three, two, one. Boosh. Oh my God, that's cold. Yep. Hello. Well, welcome back to You Betcha Radio Podcast, the coldest podcast in all the Midwest, presented by Ice Mountain Baby. I'm Oz, You Betcha Guy, here with Ryan, the t shirt guy. And I'm not going to lie, Ryan, you're taking the Bachelor weekend a little harder than I am. Listen to me. <laughs> I sound great. <laughs> you sound great. I do not. I, I don't know. I mean, it's either the jet lag or some people just can't ha- hang anymore. Well, it was one of two things: jet lag or the dry heat. I mean, that we're gonna talk about heat. That shit was dry. <laughs> it wasn't hot. It was dry. It was just. It's drier here. I think. It was. It's but the drier dry, here in the winter than it is in the desert. But the dry heat, I don't know, got got to me. Fight of my life today. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm it was here. the dry heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't that, it had to have been the jet lag. Well, with daylight savings time back and forth. You swallowed too much <laughs> desert desert dust. If that's if that's the case, you might won't want to do laundry for a couple weeks. Stay away from the dryer. I'm not doing laundry. Mate. I'm I'm pretty sure my wife will be doing laundry. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um. No. Good. No one. No one died. No. No one died except Tyler. Almost died today. Yeah. I miss Arizona where I wasn't dodging vehicles to, for my life. Literally. Yeah. So today, of course, the last day you can pull your ice house off the lake <laughs> was the day that me and Tyler went and did it. Were, were there any other houses out there? Not, no. a single, <laughs> no. not on a single lake we passed. There were not any even like there were no tr- truck marks either. There were some snowmobiles that had ripped across the lake, but not yeah. a single set of tire tracks <laughs> on that lake. Well, so, everyone driving by is like, fuck, the bite, bite must still be really good right yeah. now if those guys are grinding it out. Yeah. So we got to, you know, it actually went pretty good. It was going too well. It's going good. Um, we almost, we had to do a few runs at getting it up the, the bank where the access is at because it was a little thicker snow, mm-hmm. uh-huh. but we got it out. We we're like, I think we just had our hiccup for this mission. Mm-hmm. Is really what I thought. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're driving back to Fargo on the interstate knowing that, what did you say to me on the way out there, Tyler? Uh, heard the interstate was a little slick. And so I was like, no problem. I'm going to take it easy. And we did. Yeah. I don't think we got over 55 on the interstate once. Correct. And speed limit 70. So, and you know me, I like to speed to the limit. If you ain't going five <laughs> over, you're going 10 under. And so... At the time that it happened, literally, we were going 50 miles an hour. There was a corner that we were taking. Yes. And someone was passing Tyler at Mach 8. They were going pretty quick for Mach the conditions. Mach 8 on the inside lane and caused Tyler to... What happened? Jerk the wheel? I don't no, want to... So they were passing me, and they were passing a little too close for comfort, so I, I started to slow turn to the right to give them some more room. So I was hugging the shoulder of the road, right? Yep. All of a sudden, I feel the fish house start to slide out to and, the left. Well, so I am driving behind him, because we had the trailer with the plow on it when he had the ice house. I'm behind him, and I see... His tires start squealing a little back and forth, and I was like, oh, shit. Then I see it kind of cent- center, mm-hmm. and I was like, he, f- he fucking saved it. And then out of nowhere, that son of a bitch just started flinging around, mm-hmm. and Tyler did a 180 in a Ford truck with an 18-foot ice house attached into the ditch, I thought he was going to roll. I thought we were going to get a, a a Ford F1 sushi roll is what I <laughs> thought we were going to get. Thanks to Tyler's quick maneuvering with the controls of the truck, he just slid sideways into the ditch. No damage to the truck. Down a tire on the ice house. But I think all things considered... Mm-hmm. 
pretty good. We came out pretty good. Needed new tires anyway. I obviously didn't slip at all. <laughs> I maneuvered it to complete ease. But, you know, that's kind of just the difference sometimes. You know, different folks with different strokes. Well, I was hauling a bigger load, more of a wind catcher than you. Yeah. A little panic mode when someone pulled up next to you. But, I mean, it happens to the best of us. Well, that person, that me. just they just kept driving like it was fucking Sunday afternoon. Had no idea what they just caused. Could have <laughs> been a massive pile up. No, so I, I pull over. Then I pull over and I like kind of like catch my breath a little bit. I'm like, I, I'm not, it, cause by the time I was able to slow down, you were what? Like I was 300 too, yards, 400. Yep. I was like, I'm not going to, it's blowing snow interstate. People, cars are sliding around. I'm not running out there to see if he's okay. So I called him. I go, Hey, you okay? He goes, I'm I'm not gonna lie, a little shook. <laughs> <laughs> did you answer it on the Bluetooth or did you actually it it was Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> no. But but then I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna come back to you, I'm not gonna reverse this trailer on the mm-hmm. shoulder of the interstate for football fields. So I was like, I gotta go up and around. But then I realized like, what am I gonna do? So then we called the cops, we called the yep. the wrecker, the whole thing. And then another car comes sliding into the ditch. Uh, right across the road from me. So I end up on the north side, the far side. This other car comes barreling at, at me. I'm sure they saw me tap the brakes, lost control, drive through the barrier in the median. They wreck their front end. They're buried in this tiny little car. Uh, then the trooper shows up. Then the the tow truck drivers show up. And now we've got all of a sudden, six fucking cars on this turn. <laughs> and the way I did the complete 180, so sitting in the truck, I'm facing traffic. It's like on uh, uh, Talladega Nights when he ends up getting reversed and it, and he looks out the windshield and all the cars at 200 miles an hour <laughs> is coming right at him. That's yeah. what Tyler's... Saw. Right. How it's, far in the ditch were you? Barely. So I was barely in the ditch. So I'm right on the... And like the car, the turn... The turn was right at me. So the cars, it looks like they're going to run into me head on. And then they turn at the last second to follow the curve. So I am uncomfortable. He, he, he calls me. He's like, Miles, if I stay in the truck, I like, I'm going to get hit. I got I got all my ice fishing gear on. I'm going to like keep an eye out. And if a car's coming barreling at me, I'm going to get out of the way. And I'm like, I don't, what? <laughs> well, so my plan was to like, walk to the other side of the ditch and just go hang out by a fence next to the field. Cause when I was sitting there and watching and I was talking to the cops and shit, I was watching semis back ends shake and move and come around that curve. They were like, they were losing traction. I'm like, well, I am in the perfect spot to get absolutely pop canned by a semi. So I cannot sit here. And I'm on the phone with the trooper and he's like, you need to sit in the truck with your seatbelt on. It is the safest place. Like, I don't think I don't you think understand the situation I'm in. Now, if it's that or just standing next to the truck, I would say maybe, but it also sounds like if a semi hits it, it's a trap of death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you if you walked 100 yards away on a fence line, I could see that being a good solution. Yeah. So I'm calling the wrecker. Tyler's calling the cops. The cops are calling the wrecker. Next thing you know. There's six cars in the ditch, mm-hmm. and there's four wreckers there. Yeah. So the two re- guys from the same company were there. <laughs> yeah. And then a guy, a, a, a third dude from a different company shows up and starts towing out the other guys. And then they come over to me. They're like, hey, that fucking guy's stealing my car. <laughs> that was supposed to be my job. He's stealing my job. I'm going to take you now. And then they're, they, they got their wires crossed. They're yipping at each other from across this interstate where semis are fucking whipping shitties yeah. everywhere. Quite literally Tokyo Drift from semis around that corner. And Tyler's trying to calm down the tow truck drivers because it's turned into an episode of, episode of Orange County Choppers. <laughs> they're, throwing, they're throwing chairs at each other. There's not a single person in on this planet right now that could take us in a game of three on three on the ice. No chance in hell. Right now we're wearing our uh, what are they called? Knits or or sweaters or J's. sweaters? Sweaters. Mm-hmm. We, me, Ryan, and Tyler all are wearing our Ice Mountain 
what is it again? Ice runs deep. No, the the swe- uh, sweater. <laughs> We're all wearing our Ice Mountain sweaters. Of course, I'm the captain. Well, me I, I have the C on my chest. I have C on oh. mine. No, this stands for captain, and this stands for... Um, I know what went through your head. Right <laughs> yeah, we all I read do. your mind. Yeah. <laughs> it stands for co-person. <laughs> you and Tyler are co-people in this venture together, and I'm the captain. Well, I was going to say we're such a good hockey team that they couldn't decide. They just slapped C's on everyone's chest. One man down, the other man up. Yep. No, so mine stands for captain. <laughs> Those... Yours, your guys' is your your hockey grade of how good you are, <laughs> but C hockey players, and then I'm the captain. So, um, turn around, that's Ryan. Good, it's, it's really it, Ice Mountain even put our names on the back. Well, my name on your guys' jerseys. <laughs> you betcha, baby. Um, Michael Jordan, twenty three too. So we weren't lying about the uh, Ice Mountain. Knits or no uh, jer- sweaters? Sweaters? Fuck! <laughs> Why do I keep calling them knits? I think maybe that's a term for them too. Mitts, knits. Maybe it's a knitted sweater is what I'm thinking of. We weren't lying about the the ice mountain sweaters, and I tell you what, the best pair to be having this C on my chest is the refreshing taste of an ice mountain just slurping down. My throat. Um, I mean, the first thing that I did, I called Tyler after he had his run in with Devin. <laughs> the ditch. With the run in with the black ice on the road was. Bold of you to assume I'm going there. Yeah, I thought about hell, but then it, we've, we've been hard on you. And uh, he was, he's like, yeah, I'm a little shook. And I go, Reach into the glove box of this truck. There's an emergency ice mountain. <laughs> Chug that. You'll feel way better. And did you feel better? Maybe that was it. It wasn't the tow truck driver. It was the ice mountain. I mean, you've seen Space Jam. You've seen when they do Mike's super secret stuff. Ice mountains that you don't even know it. And Tyler experienced that today when he he experienced the the calming effect of an ice mountain in a time of tragedy, in a time of a near death experience. The only place you can turn to it was basically as he was flipping into this ravine, he thought in his head, ice mountain, take the wheel. It's basically what happened. So by golly, if you guys want to be a safe driver like me, just uh, (laughs) get yourself some ice mountain, keep yourself stocked. Because if he had drank the ice mountain beforehand, he would have known what to do in that Mm -hmm. scenario. So it's a learning lesson, honestly, for everyone here. If you want to make sure you're a safe driver, you got to be sipping on ice mountain. (sighs) So wet. We have nothing to back up the claim that drinking ice mountain prevents car accidents, by the way. so Just a guess. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. And ice mountain gives you a feeling. Tell you what. So, don't. That's our disclaimer. Don't fret, get wet. <laughs> I think that's a good tagline. I think that's a good tagline. <laughs> so we got to talk about tow truck drivers. These guys fear nothing. Not a single one wearing a coat. Yeah, I would say I don't think a. Si- we saw two of them. One guy smoking sig. Other and herbal zero, or no and zero no. zero coats in sight. Well, the, I don't think they own a coat. The one guy that was stealing toes from the other guy was in a fucking t-shirt and kinko gloves. Yeah, that's a move. And it's negative twenty five out there with the wind chill. Well, that was the thing. It was the wind was blowing so much. Mm-hmm. Um. So anyway, the tow truck drivers get their shit figured out. Who's supposed to tow who? And so they're over here. They disconnect the the ice house from the pickup. And we're standing there, kind of shooting this shit, kind of talking about what they're going to do to the right. ice house. Yeah, naturally, that's where you shoot the shit, right it's on the edge of the interstate where the <laughs> semi's <laughs> Tokyo drifting around. That sounds like a good spot to smoke and joke. Honestly, though, uh, tow truck drivers could be like hostage negotiators because I was stressed. He showed up calm as a cucumber. Oh, he yeah. brought the me am- right back down to earth. The amount of times he's executed something like that is uh, is, and then. We're sitting there shooting this shit, and we see from the eastbound lane coming the opposite way, a semi start to lose control. 
So and now it's coming. You're getting it from all directions. Yes. And the semi jackknifes, it starts to swerve a little bit. And the tow truck driver is like, get out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck. So I'm like fucking running towards the fence. Semi gets stuck in the, in the median. So we're fine. Semi doesn't get to us. But if those little cords wouldn't have been there. Yeah, we're in trouble. So other side was of track. Was anyone clocking your 40 time at, at that moment? <laughs> I mean, through, I bet your pro agility was insane. <laughs> through with all my fishing gear, my giant boots and four feet of snow, I think it probably would have been around a four, five, five. seven. Respect. That's pretty good. Four, in seven in the snow, like four, one without the snow. Um, but then he looks at me, he's like, get in your truck, get the fuck out of here. It's not safe. Go wait for me at the next, the next exit. That is so cool by that guy shirtless he's not even wearing a shirt <laughs> he he could see you were a little chilly so he gave you his t-shirt to put over your coat. he's got four cigarettes in his mouth <laughs> and he just is he's uh, suddenly he's evolved into superman yeah and i was like he's, yes he's, sir yeah and right after he said that you started walking away he saw us turn around a semi was about to hit him he just stopped the semi with his hands <laughs> flew up in the air and set it back down on the thing he said boss are you like sure this, this was not Clark Kent? I mean, you take the cigarette out of his mouth, maybe. Yeah. It's like his Superman was thing's he, a marb well, red. He was wearing the, the, the black rim glasses. Yeah, like, yeah, yep. I, oh, he takes them off. Oh, my God, you're, you're Superman. If this guy was in the military, he would be there for 30 seconds and instantly get battlefield commission because he knew exactly what to do in all situations. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way this guy sounds. Calm as a cuke. So... <laughs> You you put up you you tell me where I rank people. Tow truck drivers are at the top of the fucking list. But they're also kind of pieces of shit sometimes. You know? They like know that you gotta pay, so they're like, what can I charge this person? <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, it's I think it's a yin and a yang. It, it, I mean, they probably do should get paid for towing out of the ditches in those conditions a lot of money because again, absolutely Superman. But when you park with your one half of your tire over the line of a handicap spot and they come tow your truck, fuck that. Mm, fair. You fair. Know? Now I see I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But that's not them. That's the police making them do it. Yeah. You gotta make you not the winter's not that long. They can't Sounds be pulling like people out of ditches yeah. all year round. They're they're used to following orders, but they're also used to giving orders. Mm -hmm. All I know. Yin and yang. Yeah. It it does sound. I mean, their ability to work under pressure is unbelievable. I mean, not a care in the world. These guys, they were the so finally two dudes had to come over there because of the trailer and the truck, and it was nonverbal. They just knew exactly what the other one was going to do. So there's two dudes in one truck. Yeah, they were passing. Each, like, no, two dudes in two trucks. Hey, oh, okay. Focus. This is life or death. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just trying to bring some humor to the situation. At one point, they were just looking at the other. The one just whips out a cig and hands it to his buddy. Hell yeah! He knew like, he was. He knew he needed it. Well, I mean, imagine the high stress job and not smoking uh, actual cigarettes. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if the guy was smoking herbals that day, he'd have been pissed off. And herbal would not have done the trick in that situation. You ever seen the no. movie Limitless with the limitless pills that yeah. he takes? Mm -hmm. To truck drivers, cigarettes are limitless pills. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. They get a cigarette in them and suddenly the world is clear and they know exactly what to do. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good reference. Yeah. Thanks. Also, Ryan. I mean, what. What people are forgetting right now is that you're you're a part of the small percentage that just it didn't even phase them. I mean, <laughs> I could take that corner another hundred times, <laughs> and I'm clearing it one hundred <laughs> times out of one hundred times. So, I mean, I navigated it without even a tiny bit of a fishtail. So you were behind him, I correct? Was, yeah, because the blinkers don't fucking work. No, they the started working. Okay. Okay. Fuck. Next thing you do, you tell someone that I don't got it registered. <laughs> <laughs> Which you do. Which I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, not a single fishtail. I mean, I was, what's the opposite of a fishtail? Straight as an arrow. I was an arrow going around that. <laughs> well, arrows can only go straight. What? I was a NASCAR driver. <laughs> In that scenario, you handled the situ handle the situation with absolute. Well, and I've rode in a pace car at Daytona before, Same. so I, I think my instincts from that just kicked in, and so I knew exactly what to do in that scenario. And I did like once I pulled over, you know, 
mm-hmm. and I saw and I called you. You're good to go. And then I'm like, okay, what should I do? Because I'm just chilling here. And I, you know, made eye contact with a few drivers and I kind of gave them like a. <laughs> It's my buddy, yeah. I just, he's, he's first time driving. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry you had to slow down. Cause, uh, hey, what did the cars behind me do? Because there was a couple in between us, right? They laughed. There, there was no... I mean, well, they were to the left, but... Oh. Tyler, I'll tell you this. Because of that semi coming the other direction, so I drove down there, right? And... Oh, yeah, because we didn't know how long it was going to be until someone could get to Tyler. Yeah. And I had another truck, or I had a trailer, so I wasn't going to go around and get stuck as well. Hindsight, though, I was never going to get stuck. No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I called the only person that wasn't immediately busy at the office, Jake, obviously. It wasn't busy at all. <laughs> to, to just, hey, go pick up your boy so he's out of danger. So, But we ended up not needing him because the truck was there pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, but ASAP. that's because they, I think they flew there. This truck driver was well, Superman. They got Superman hearing, too, so they were there before the call even was made. And so Jake just got to go on a mid work day drive. Drive. Yeah. So Tyler, you spun out like what, like four or five miles out of town, probably yeah, seven about. miles out of town. Um, there was it was stop and go. By the time I got back in town, it was stop and go from the scene of the spin out all the way back until like pretty much town. Jesus. The interstate was backed up that far, and it was smooth sailing on the way out. So. Thankfully, you slowed down everyone you else did. that was taking yeah. it. It wasn't the first one in. There was a semi down the road by the really? way station that was also in. Yeah. They were buried. Yeah, but you were kind of like the trendsetter for that corner. Mm. Yeah. No, Tyler, you were the first one in on that you corner. You were the first so. one in there. Yeah. I saw it. Well, there were so also I, tracks. I know you were too worried about listening to whatever podcast you were listening to that you spun into the... That that was the worst part of the you, whole thing. It's like, yeah, it's it's <laughs> like... You were so focused on the Bellied Up podcast that you will listen to religiously <laughs> that you lost control of your car. Yeah, so I'm sitting there listening to Bellied Up because I don't hear enough of Miles' voice every day. Correct. So I wanted to listen Good to it you. while I was in the truck as well. And I start to spin. Jesus takes the wheel. I'm getting ready to roll over. Uh, instincts save me again. Um, and then the calm hits. Adrenaline's pumping and all I hear is fucking Miles and Charlie yipping. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jesus literally took the wheel. Uh, yeah, if that's, I mean, don't. I'm not going to lie, him. Tyler. I did think as you were barreling into the <laughs> ditch, I did think this situation would be so easy for me to handle. Oh, my God. Because I was like, okay, he's going to start flipping. Like He's about to start just rolling again, like on Talladega Nights when he just keeps rolling and f- flipping. I thought that was, <laughs> was going to happen. And I was like, okay, easy. I start going the ditch. I start spinning. Seatbelt off, window <laughs> down. I crawl out the window, and then as it starts spinning, I just start running on it like the log runners do in the, in the outdoor <laughs> games. I'm just running on the truck now as it's spinning and flipping, and I'm just, I, you know, lower waist down, frantic. I'm like a duck, frantic, waist up. Calm and cool as a cucumber. Calm as a cuke. And I'm just running on the truck as it flips underneath my feet. And then when it finally comes to a stop, I'm just standing there and I just go, got that done on my next project. <laughs> Is what I would have done in your situation if it had started flipping. Yeah, I took care of the. Luckily, it never got to that point. Um, but I mean, I you I would have looked like a log roller at the great outdoor games. <laughs> Jesus. <Jeez. laughs> I mean, you could also say that. Do you ever have that at the at the playground growing up, the oh, log yeah. runner, and oh, yeah. the amount of times I bit my lip <laughs> on that thing was... Yeah, the, the amount of times that I did the splits over top of that thing. It was one of the hardest... Uh, well, not necessarily for me, but one of the hardest <laughs> playground apparatuses, I think, out there. The most dangerous, well, that, too. That's the apparatus that turns boys into men. It's like once you can conquer the log roll at the playground, you're off. Can you imagine just literally just running like it was a treadmill on that yeah. thing? <laughs> that would have been me. Yeah. I still haven't conquered it to the, to this day. Still going to the get, playground. I got to get back down to Jehinkapa. <laughs> it's a park in my hometown's name. <laughs> How is anyone supposed to know that? Well, it's a pretty... Isn't it a zoo? It's a park. Oh. With it a zoo well in known. it. Oh. There's a, yeah. Basically, what you're saying is you were playing real-life Frogger. Uh, yeah, actually, for a little while, pretty close. What? Oh, Scary, I'm huh? on phone with nine one one, 
and I'm tell I tell them about the other car in the ditch. And they're like, can you see if everyone's okay over there? I was like, no, I can't really see. They're like, can you go over there and check on them? And I was like, no, I, I, I can't. <laughs> he literally just told, said no. I I did. I was like, I can't. There's so many cars coming by right now. I'm not running across the interstate. I mean, the fact that you were talking back to law enforcement <laughs> uh, just no, tells it, me what type of person. I can't you believe are. you were limping off. It in, was in just that, dispatch. In that state. It was dispatch. You were stressed. I get it. There was absolutely no urgency from the other the dude on the end of the nine one one call. Yeah, but too. they already had someone on the way. That's the thing. Is like when they're asking these questions, they already had pe- they already got people on the way. No, but like it? you hear you see it on TV and you hear about like you hear a nine one one call, like someone recorded and they posted. There's urgency in the person's voice. They're like, all right, people coming this, people doing that. This guy was like, "Are you all right, dude?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm fine. Everyone else, all right." Well, it's like so, I, I don't know. But the thing is, is can you? They would every single dispatch person would die at thirty years old if they. This is every single one of their calls is someone in your situation. Imagine if they were like, "Oh my god, just stay with." They would. They would have a heart attack. Yeah, but like this guy, that adrenaline that you felt, if you wanted the same reciprocated to you, they would drop over dead. It'd be eight hours of pure adrenaline for these guys. I would have liked a little urgency. He they already be called calm, the though. cop. They have to no, stay he calm. Like I'm on the phone, and he's. Th- Did he ask you where you were, Tyler? They dispatch people via computer. If you've ever seen any any like cops, all right, hold please, and then they press a button. They take their little cord out of the one <laughs> thing and they stick it in the other one. Talk to the cop. That's not yeah. how it works anymore. It was just so slow. Did you tell her where you were to begin with? Yeah, well, right. Then it was the guy was already. Let dispatched. me finish. It no, was already dispatched. It wasn't. <laughs> I think it was. I, I'm trying to tell you what the phone call was. I but I think I know how it went. You don't. Because you were off fucking sitting on your thumb on the waiting for me. I was the eye in the sky that kept you safe. <laughs> Jake, Jake I was. also didn't even make you pay for the tow truck either. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or the fucking ice house that needs to be fixed. Yeah, now. I didn't do that either. So you know what? So the, what the phone the call. <laughs> what did the dispatch say? They didn't even ask me what my emergency was. They're like, hey, 911. It's like, it's like, you should have uh, been like, hey, this is Tyler. <laughs> and But because you probably didn't sound frantic either, you probably was just matching your chillness. <laughs> I didn't say anything. That was what he answered the phone with. I know. Then what did you say? And I was like, um, I went in the ditch. I'm so relaxed right now. I, that's how that guy felt. Maybe he's a tow truck driver and he kept me calm. Yeah. Maybe it was the tow truck driver. Regardless, I think they do teach the dispatch people to stay calm. I mean, they have. Yeah, but it was just, I was expecting more questions. It was like, okay, um, about where did you go off the road? And I was like, (laughs) about a mile from the way station. And they didn't ask me what direction. They're like, okay, um, what side of the road are you on? The right side or the left side? And I'm like, well... If you're facing west, I'm on the right side. There you go. That's all they needed to know, and they dispatched them. Also, they they know your lo- location by your cell phone. Yeah, but they could have. This was they could have given that you some true. information. They triangulated That's- the cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just watched. Yeah, I just watched Netflix show. Everything you're saying is being done, or everything you're saying that's not being done is already being done. Dispatched. Hey. Cell phones pinged. Just like me running on the flipping truck there from the waist up, they're cool. They're chit-chatting with you waist down. They're fucking clicking away, sending cops your way. Yeah. Then eventually he's like, okay, um, I'm just going to send you to a trooper. And so then he just transferred me to a trooper. And then I had to, the trooper actually asked the right questions. He's like, all right, we, which direction were you going? I said, I was heading West. He's like, okay. So you slid off on the, on the north side of the road then? I was like, yep, I'm on the north side of the road. He's like, have you been able to see if the passengers in the other vehicle are okay? I was like, yeah, I saw him moving around now. He's like, okay, what are you doing? Where are you standing? I'm, like, I'm standing outside the truck by a fence. He's like, get back in the truck. That's the safest place. Put nope. your seatbelt on. Still, I, I can be convinced, but I'm still not necessarily. If a, if a Kia came sliding, yeah, I'd say get the truck. <laughs> fucking uh, Mack truck comes barreling at you? Dead. I would be dead. 
are you sure you called the right person? Well, you got to hold the dispatch. Are you sure it wasn't just like Jimmy John's or something? I mean, they would like, what would you like to order? If it was (laughs) Jimmy John's, they might have been the only people there faster than the tow truck driver. Are you sure there isn't a restaurant in town or a bar called the dispatch? (laughs) (laughs) And there would be great marketing on them to make their phone number 911. That wouldn't be bad. Yeah. well, that's your problem. You should have dialed the number for the dispatch. Well, you should. Or not nine one one. That's for emergencies. You were not. You were fine. Well, I called the emergency number, and the dude is like, "This is nine one one." What's your emergency? This is Tyler. He didn't ask. He didn't ask what my emergency was. Uh, also, again, back to the tow truck drivers. Kind of a racket on their billing situation. Lady on the phone as she's dispatching her person to you is like, is that, will that be cash or card? And I'm like, like, you want me to do this over the, f- what do you mean? And I was like, how, well, how much is it going to be? <laughs> she's like, ah, oh, well, it's not going to be any less than like 300 bucks. And I was like, so that means that that is, they don't charge anyone $300. That means <laughs> the starting rate is at least 450 <laughs> And it turns out they take card. It costs 500 bucks to get an ice house delivered somewhere and <laughs> the truck to be pulled out. And I found out. So, I mean, we just got I mean, a bachelor party too where we dropped racks so on racks. If anyone no, wants to help out with Tyler's, because this is going to come out of Tyler's paycheck. Got it. And I the mean, repairs to the ice house. So, if anyone wants to help, Tyler, pay for this. Go subscribe at Patreon. Slashy <laughs> 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 Venture Radio. Um, Let's dig it into my cut too, Tyler. Here. <laughs> you get a That's cut? fucking bullshit. It's like, it's like we're the Millers. You're getting paid? <laughs> uh, yeah. You can also find the Bachelor Potty episode. That was a pretty good yeah. episode. It was, yeah. Um, but, Tyler... I think I'd like to end this part of the podcast with a little bit of perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes it's slick interstates and dispatched conversations, you know, and uh, it's a good time just to remember that we're all going to die. And so you really got to just live in the moment and uh, remember that. Not every day is promise, and you got to live your live every day like your last. They call it the present because it's a gift. Mm. Exactly. I think uh, I don't remember who said that, but what did you see when your life flashed before your eyes? Um, absolutely nothing. I actually like it. Weirdly enough, I hate when people like tell these stories. It did really slow down. Actually, I was very conscious of everything that was happening, and I was like, "All right." Stiffen up. You're about to flip. You s- so like he just had both hands on the wheels. I mean, it is cu- it is not what you're supposed to do. You're you supposed got, to stay relaxed. No, you got, so you got uh, stiff. <laughs> Come on, man. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to bring humor to this. It's not hey, working. Okay. Live this isn't the humor day. moment. I just set the tone that it was no longer about funniness. I know. Yep. Go ahead, Tyler. No, I did actually like things slowed down and I was... Uh, in the moment, very calm, and then it stopped, and I was not calm. So I didn't think about much other than how am I going to get out of this alive? I think just for publicity sake, you could have just said I saw my wife and kids. I did. That that's what I would have gone. That was my first thought after. Uh, honestly, I think okay, <laughs> but I think you probably could have you know juiced it up for yourself a little bit <laughs> if you just would have. Taking that softball question I gave you and just nailed it out of the park. If you had just been like, yeah, I just, all I was thinking in that moment as I'm spinning into the ditch is how much I love my wife and kids. And then that would have got you laid for like a month straight. I'm not struggling in the department. Oh, there we go. (laughs) Um, But just saying, that's what I would have gone with. But it's your story. It's your moment. I just told the truth. I know. I also don't know the magnitude of the situation. I'm just hearing it secondhand. Yeah. So it's it's hard for me to realize how much danger you were actually in. He was in a lot of danger. Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, all jokes good. aside, like he almost fucking, he could I mean, if he was going, I truly believe if we weren't going 50 miles an hour, mm-hmm. had slowed down and you were just going even 65, 
you would have flipped over and your life would have been in danger. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. I, yeah, that's what I told them too. Yeah, I'm glad too, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Jake? Tyler, I'm glad you're okay. <clears throat> Jake was hoping. I was drooping. The re so. other reason I was joking was because you, your coping mechanisms is to joke mm -hmm. about things like this. It's so too, that, too fresh, though. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, let me have it. Gotcha. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm I mean, I need about five more minutes. But we can't even promise next week. That's the thing. That's true. That is true. How we, dare you we assume almost did, we get next week? We almost that's didn't why, get this podcast. I know. And that's why I, well, I would have made sure that we did the podcast still. Well, I was going to say. Because you would have wanted Because us to next man up, you know? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Jake, hey, you were this, if I do, <laughs> you were this close to that chair. <laughs> if I do die tragically, give me one episode of an empty chair. Jake can have it the week after. Give me one episode of this chair empty. What if we just have him sit on the arm of the chair? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I want this. Actually, get a new chair. I want this one retired. You can have the spot. So you probably haunt that chair if you died. I'll yeah, leave chair. it. I'll haunt the chair. I actually kind of would think that was kind of cool if you haunted us. Because I then it's like, I can be like... Tyler, I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking relax, dude. Yeah, this, uh, you only made me pee a little. <laughs> <laughs> this bit, bit from the Patreon episode. Go check it out at patreon.com slash you bet your radio. Um, me as a ghost, I'd be icing you all the time. Yeah, I just I'd be like, go how, how are these ices <laughs> showing up with my briefcase? It was not in there when I left the house. <laughs> That'd be a great prank as a ghost. Then I would literally have to get a briefcase with a lock on it, like the old school, you know, the actual like square briefcase so yeah. Tyler couldn't get into it. I'm a ghost though. But ices aren't ghosts. I can make them ghosts while I touch them. Bitch, I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, if you're driving this, if you're, if you're listening to this in the car, Make sure you got your hands at 10 and 2. Ten Slow and two, down. Maybe. Slow down. And whatever you do, don't do what Tyler did in that dire situation. Do what I would do and not go in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the next segment. <laughs> but actually, though, guys, it's a good perspective to remember that you're not promised tomorrow. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you know, it's been one of my dreams since I was a kid. What's that, Miles? To shoot a gun while wearing a hockey jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Specific. <laughs> yeah, very. And I'm wearing a captain's jersey. You're wearing a regular jersey. <laughs> and we have a range in town that we could both wear these Jersey knitted, these knitted jerseys, sweaters, knitted sweaters, sweaters. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and we could go shoot our Mossbergs and fulfill one of my childhood dreams. What do you think? You, you gotta get, get home to your down, kid. Down, whatever, whatever you, you gotta get been... home to your kid tonight, or <laughs> do you? I mean, you could no, up. because if it's gonna fulfill your childhood dream, my kid wouldn't want the same. Correct answer. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you are also someone that had that same childhood dream like I did, I think you got to go to Mossberg.com and pick out a, a nice firearm and then maybe um, break out one of your old knitted jersey sweaters from your hockey time and go uh, go to the range. I think, or, you, I think you go to a long range, get a Mossberg rifle, brings a whole new meaning to dangle snipe Sally. I like that. Or like that we could go shoot clay pigeons, quote unquote. But Hockey I could pucks? I could throw some pucks up in the air for yeah. you. And I mean, we can just we can shoot. What do they call them? Well, what the puck? We might as well. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, what's better than looking like a degenerate adult that wears a hockey jersey? 
I mean, right? Well, I mean, people see you walking through a hockey you're game. Just, they're like, if, I feel, I couldn't feel more safe. People right who, now. anyone who's wore a hockey jersey not to a hockey game is kind of degenerate. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> and so, to, but to to be a cool degenerate, go to Mossberg.com. <laughs> We're all we wearing, wearing hockey, hockey jerseys. jerseys. Not at a game. Not at a game. <laughs> right now. <laughs> we are degenerate fucks. Yeah. So go to Mossberg.com. Get yourself a firearm. Straight barrel you're ever going to see. If you were a hockey player growing up, chances are you were not very good. <laughs> clearly not in the NHL. Um, well, maybe. And so it would have. I think that Mossberg should start making hockey sticks, honestly, because if you're out there like a doofus with a curved. And to your <laughs> hockey stick, you've clearly never seen how straight a Mossberg is and how accurate they are. And so maybe the hockey industry should let Mossberg have a whack at it. <laughs> let them have their way. Let them have a, give them a shot, you know, because if I'm Mossberg CEO, <laughs> I miss a hundred percent of the shots that I don't take. Did you just come up with that right now? I just thought of that. Wow. So go to Mossberg.com. Okay, we're back. We forgot to tell the Jared. <coughs> Jared. <coughs> I'm choking on a bag of dicks. You got a little dick dicks? in your throat? From the bachelor From potty. From the bachelor potty left over. Patreon.com. Let's do a bunch of radio. Um, Jared's still with us, by the way. We never preface why Jared wasn't here on oh, the yeah. podcast. Also an AZ. He's so AZ right now. Montana to AZ, Jared's just hiking his storm up. If you're watching the podcast, you can probably see by now how much more tan I am than Ryan, and that's because I just have much more of an olive glow than he does. Because we just I were, don't know. We just were so AZ. I'm looking at the, Arizona. I'm, I'm looking at the cams right now, and I am wearing a light colored shirt, which accentuates the tan even more. I mean, you look washed out. <laughs> I'm also fighting the flu right now. Yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <coughs> what was that noise you just made? I'm choking. He's choking. Out a bag oh, of dicks. I don't know if maybe you caught whatever Ryan has. Quite literally. Um, no, we had a bachelor party party, not potty. Yeah, we did both. But we did both. Patreon.com such a bit radio. But <sighs> we went to Arizona. We played golf. Mm -hmm. Ryan played good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Me yeah, and Tyler happy. did not. You know what's one, maybe one of the most depressing things maybe in my life? <laughs> yeah. Is when I play good and you don't. No. no, no. It's worse than that. Uh, oh, do you know what I'm going to say? I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say. I wish I could be one of those people that can get obliteratedly drunk and still play good golf. Agreed. I cannot. Same. I have three beers and the fourth one just puts me over an edge and all of a sudden I can't hit a ball. Oh, sorry. I I can on the course mid round. I can't do it after a million beers the day before. Well, it kind of double jeopardy for me. Then. Yeah. 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 We kind of had both things going. Mm -hmm. Your sweet spot's very low. I mean, it just saying. doesn't help that you get four hours of sleep, drank the entire day before, you're now drinking again. Just, I mean. Yeah. It's not a recipe so for success. No. On the grass. So how do you do it? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it just comes absolutely natural. I could be in any any sort of bodily state. and What about so mental state? Both. But booze doesn't affect me mentally so as it, like it does bodily. You could have went flipping into the ditch. Stepped out of the car right away and piped a drive down the middle? Probably. Okay, that's impressive. I mean, on, honest to God truth, probably. Unless it's in a local tournament. Oh, well, unless there's real stakes. <laughs> 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 Says the guy who's never fucking played in a local tournament. Can't get in. They won't let me. Because of him? Uh, yeah, I was his caddy. I'm also banned. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been found where all podcasts to be found. Don't bother show. You can go uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> that was cute. But I, 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 I will, will say. say <laughs> <laughs> what will you say? Saturday. I mean, 
after going absolutely ham Friday, which is what does that mean? It means I went hard in the paint. It means the that booze acronym makes no sense. The what? booze was flowing. H A M hard in the paint. Yes, I went. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I went like. What is ham? It's mean? two different. It's two different phrases. What is ham? You and hip. Hard in the paint. Ham means hard as a motherfucker. Why is it not hamf? <laughs> because it doesn't sound as good. <laughs> I think motherfucker is one word. Uh, yeah, uh, it is. Tyler. We'll yeah. go with that. Google it, Google boy. But I was lying about the bodily thing. Bodily, I can't. I can't. I can't do what we did and then play good, which I didn't. Very, I didn't play very good Saturday. Okay. Up to one my word, expectations. Sorry. Yeah, it is one word. Ham. Fuck. And I also motherfucker. Pulled, I pulled that out of my ass. I didn't even know what that means. I just guessed. No, you're right. That is what I know. Ham that's means. what it means. So I don't know how I do. It. I can maybe teach you sometime. I don't think it can be taught. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, it just was, I think I finally realized like, but, but the, but here's the problem, right? I golf by myself in the morning. Sometimes just nine holes. Mm -hmm. I can play great golf, but when I go out with go golfing with people, I drink every single time. And so if I, I'm never going to play good golf with other people because I drink with them and I'm bad, a bad golf drinker. And the worst part about all that is if you tell someone how good you golf by, by yourself, yourself, they don't, they don't believe, believe you. Ah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's absolutely infuriating. Mm -hmm. I'm planning. We had simulator league this year. This, this was winter. Didn't drink. You played. Great. Didn't drink. Played great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First time I drank this winter while I played. I'm not talking like having a beer. We did that. Yeah. But like where I'm, you know, doing a mixed drink, doing a beer, doing another beer. The countdown uh, stone cold Steve Austin style or whatever. <laughs> I'm screwed. I'm absolutely screwed because if I'm doing anything fun on the golf course, I'm having drinks and I'm playing bad golf. Well, then my problem too is every time I get back into the cart, I feel like I have to take a drink. You know, it's like, you have something like, in your hand. It's kind of like an as, asphyx, yeah. asphyx, asphyx, Ex a oral asphyx fixation. Uh, yeah. I was going to yeah. say asphyx, asphyx, it's asphyx, asphyxiation. It's, it's a fixation. Now you get into the cart, you grab, a, you grab your beer, you take a drink. And no, every time I get in and out of the cart, I take a drink. So well, and nothing looks sicker than driving the rig, aka golf cart, <laughs> with your leg sticking out the side and yep. your fucking brewski just hanging on the left leg like this. <laughs> nothing sicker. And it's sick. And then you just take a drink, wave at the cart girl, and keep rolling. You know. Well, I mean, if if you're not playing good, it's 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 good to look sick. Yeah. So you don't want to be playing bad and look like a dweeb a dark mm -hmm. and be not drinking. <laughs> narc. We tell it on. <laughs> no, that's what narcs do. Oh, and the, the golf course version of a narc is calling the clubhouse and telling the pace of that play is, is true. slow. Yeah. That being said, oh my <laughs> fuck. I was this close to calling the clubhouse this weekend. What was it? Was it six hour round? It, yeah, it was five, it was five hours. And a, a solid five and a half hour round. It was it was almost six. Mm -hmm. Six hours to play eighteen holes. To play eighteen holes. Shit face, hungry, <laughs> sunburnt. Car as girl fuck. ran out of roller dogs. <laughs> Absolute disaster scenario. I will take. I'll take the blame for that one. Huh? Because when I. I'm the one who booked tea times. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, we need, there's a couple variables here. This is a course we're going to go play. You did tell me that the Google reviews that were not positive were negative in a sense of like the pace of play is really bad here. Yeah. And I'm like, well, fuck, that just had to have been one day, maybe. Mm -hmm. We got there, and I mean, we were standing on every single tea box for at least 10 minutes. Yeah, at least, which makes the drinking thing. Even worse, because mm -hmm. there's nothing to do when you're waiting for another group in front of you than to drink. So the downfall happens a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. We're talking like maybe hole six or seven versus like hole 13 or 14 because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. It's like corn, cornhole. Drinking helps me. Yeah. Big for yeah. some reason. Golf does not. 
But I imagine golf's a little bit more of like a sport than cornhole is, maybe. I would agree. In that, like, you wouldn't be slamming beers and running up and down the court playing five on five basketball, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to hit a three pointer no. if that was the case, anyways. God, no. So it's got to be more simulator. So, whoa. More similar. Uh, another thing, too. Is like when you have those long weights, and I can golf fine pretty hammered. I've had some of my best rounds really, really drunk, but it's the having to fucking pee every single hole. You got to find a tree that's out of sight, or you got to wait. You hold it a hole, and you're in fucking pain while you're trying to get into the bathroom. That I, I missed a putt this weekend because I was literally. <laughs> I don't know if you can, if this is possible if the human body lets you do this, <laughs> but if if you could be pinching your dick hole shut, <laughs> that's what I was doing because I had to pee so bad, but I also had to sink this putt and I just missed it because all I could think about <laughs> was trying not to pee my pants. You know how hard it is you to putt just- trying to keep your dick hole closed <laughs> <laughs> were you trying to like flex the hole closed like it's a I don't muscle know. or were you I, pinching I was your- trying to do everything I could and that felt like the last resort it is really it is quite literally the last wave holding it in and I was doing everything I could it already passed the other layers. <laughs> I was, just, I was trying. It to was, make. it was starting to dribble. Actually, I was That's, trying, no, I, was, I had it pinched. <laughs> the amount of force that was built up after flexing the sphincter, whatever. Oh, yeah, I blasted a hole in the porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> didn't call the. It was out. like you to. know how like uh, they cut metal with. <laughs> With water, water spray, it was the like water <laughs> jet. That's what it was like after holding it after that putt. Absolutely sliced I, and diced. I actually, it. I actually uh, carved a <laughs> "You Bet You" logo in the side of the porta potty with my water jet. Uh, that's how bad I had to pee, and I almost made the putt too. It was a miracle that I was even out there playing. Well, I, I wouldn't have even counted. I would have counted as if you made it because you had to pee so, so bad. We started doing this thing where if you hit a bad shot, you can just drop one, hit another one. Like, don't, you don't use that one you dropped, but it's just like to feel good, right? We me- call it the mental, mental health, health, shot. health shot. We got to start instituting pee putts. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to pee really bad, your gimme range is like 15 feet. <laughs> I'm not going to pee on the course anymore then. Yeah. I need that extra 15 feet. I'll prove it with a couple of dribbles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll maybe leak a couple <laughs> dribbles and I and I'll wear tan shorts even. Yeah. yeah. To ensure that I can get those pee gimmies, the pee putts. It was funny cuz I got uh, a case of the pee putts right now. Is this good? Okay. <laughs> and then you do the little like quick little run over to the porta potty. It was funny cuz uh one of the guys in our groups, he had to piss bad. And I think he was peeing against a tree, but he was peeing right on the tree, and it was it was spraying back at him. So <laughs> what he, a rookie fucking move! Yeah. So he had just piss all over his shorts <laughs> when he was done peeing. So institute the piss putt. Yeah. I mean, we that's probably why we went so low that day. Yeah, because you were guys giving yourself fifteen piss foot gimmies. four four straight holes before it dried. It was like piss putt. And we're good to go. Having a golf podcast is so easy. You guys got it so easy. It is. It's the easiest thing. Yeah, we didn't say it was. We hard. just we just instituted a new rule. Can we cut this up and use this for our podcast? Yeah, just throw it at the end. <laughs> yeah, double bogey show found where all double bogeys can be found. Hey, uh, we'd like to welcome on a new guest, Miles the Betcha guy. P putts. I'm serious. When you got a P, your score don't count. It's so cr- like the pros. They've never been standing on the green doing this with their feet because they got to pee. Yep. Hips moving. That's true. They'll stop play so they can go pee. Exactly. You don't have that luxury. I know. Everyone's always like, pace of play. Well, pace How, of about, play the pace? Got How about the pace of the piss coming out of my penis? <laughs> 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 Talk pa- to me about that. The PPP rule. Yeah. Yeah, the pace of piss was way quicker than the pace of play. That day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very true. At yeah. one point, the first round, Ryan and I like snuck into an abandoned lot that was along the course. Yeah, well, we had we were taking measures that should not have been taken. Yeah. Disastrous. But did you have fun? Oh, I had a great time. It went exactly how I wanted it to go. 
Which is exactly how it should have went. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, usually at when you get nine dudes all going out, drinking, doing whatever, there's either some sort of argument mm-hmm. or we you lose a person or it's just someone does some dumb shit. We never really had that. No. Yeah. It was pretty uh, good. Vibes were good. I only had to snap on my brother one time. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't even count that. No. Well, you mean if you weren't out on your bachelor party, you snapped on him on him. Yeah, I would have snapped on him regardless. So, <laughs> it, so I was asked that a couple times too. Like, oh, is hey, there any drama? It's like, no. I think the closest. I don't feel like I don't feel like bachelor parties really have drama. The closest thing to drama was you and me getting pissed at each other, hung over, get yeah. on a Gatorade run. That fucking pissed me off. You by fucking the way. pissed me off. What happened? Let's talk about it. Gas station, point two miles away. Gives, gives, holiday. Yeah. Holiday. Point two away. And of course, he gives me the wrong turn on the way. We well, just home. missed one turn. Was in it 0.2 was miles. It really that big of a deal? It was because we were driving like a, like a 14 know, but, foot but van. But I want you to remember here, hold my. I want you to remember that this is the perspective podcast. That is very true. And if you had known that your buddy Tyler could have flipped into a ravine and potentially been one with the Lord. Just a few days later, do you think you would have thought that, that was such a big deal? Probably not. There we go. I should be a therapist. No. Nope. And then more. I, pers- I actually would have should have just kept driving and been like, hey man, let's just take a little cruise. Yeah. We're not yeah. doing anything yeah. anyway. It's kinda it's kinda like on <laughs> this is so bad. Fast and Furious at the end when him and <laughs> fake Paul Walker, because they CGI's his face because he was already gone at that his point. His brother, yeah. They just go driving together. It's basically what Yeah. We should have just kept driving. Yeah. I need mean, more perspective. If that's you know, the only turmoil the whole weekend, that's a pretty good weekend. Well, yeah. Solid. <laughs> he took a wrong turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tyler's like, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. We're supposed to turn there. And, and Ryan's like, that wasn't a mistake. <laughs> that was a happy accident. <laughs> Glad we got this time together, brother. <laughs> Bob Rosses me. He's like, why don't we uh, head to the cemetery and pick out a spot for you? And you're like, what? <laughs> Jesus. Hey, yeah, I had a dream promise. last night. I don't know. I got a feeling. Weird, weird it's feeling. It's like Final Destination. Guy has a dream. They avoid death, and then death follows them the rest of the movie. Mm. 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 Have not seen it. Uh, not, I know what I probably have. Not a great that. watch. I thought. I thought that that was a, a video game. To be honest, it's Final Fantasy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is it? Final Destination. Never seen it. Mm. Not worth it. There's better movies. There's like twelve of them. Also, too. you spoiled the whole thing, anyway. No, so. I didn't. I don't tell you Death who does. Follows him. Dream happens in the first three minutes, so okay, it's probably in the trailer. Okay, um, but yeah, nice I, to put that in perspective for you. No, I, I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to lay that out for me because I was pissed off at the moment, and I shouldn't have been. You know, we why? were both because oh. it was the present, and they call it the present because it's a gift, and I was gifted that day to go to the gas station, holiday gas station, with Tyler. You didn't pass gas that day, did you? Mm-mm. We did pass gas, but we did not pass the energy drink section. Yeah, we, we loaded up. Oh, you didn't get... Well, passed gas station. Anyways. <laughs> so, thank Next you. time you're feeling a little feisty, just remember, could be anyone's time here soon. <laughs> but it wasn't our time that day. Nope. And we, we made so it. So it kind of felt a little good to get pissed at Tyler. <laughs> kind of, well, yeah. I was hungover too, and I didn't want to be out there. I was, yeah. It was kind of a dipshit move by him. <laughs> I, did de- I did delay our trip by 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, that wasn't even the extent of it. And then what? And then what we- about the butterfly effect? Maybe his truck would have flipped and he would have been in grave danger if he would have taken the right turn. Yeah. I, w- I was just going to think, I was just going to say that. If we would have taken the right turn, there would have been some sort of turmoil. Yeah. On that turn. Well, if we take well, we that, delayed it by 30 seconds. What if by missing that 30 second window, we didn't get hit by another truck coming yeah. by? That's there. what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You just never know. You never know. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful life. And honestly, good, good two people to have a little tiff at your bachelor party. Not like some other people that are like meeting each other for the first time. Yeah. It's good to have it as the two guys that are with each other all the fucking time. Yeah. I mean, I've 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 seen him for fifteen days. Straight. The bad mm-hmm. boys of the golf podcast industry. I mean, really going after each other's throats. A lot of people are calling us that. I Not us, that. but we're golf's bad boys. 
That's what some like to say. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That we, it wasn't even about us. It's not even about the wrong turn. It's not even about misdirection. It was about you. It was about dead man walking. Mm-hmm. Last finally, week, finally, you guys get it. <laughs> <laughs> finally, you're awakened. Present gift. Yeah. Perspective. Welcome to the fucking present. <laughs> Perspective. No, it was all in all a really fun weekend. We ate good. We drank good. We golfed bad. And we made it home safe. We did. Also, what else can you ask for? I mean, I could ask for another drink on the fucking first class <laughs> flight there. Yeah. I've never flown first class before. Upgraded this time. I'm like, why not? Three drinks in. Plane's almost about to land. She's like, I asked for the third one. She's like, okay, one more and that's it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not even buzzed right now. I mean, we're drinking up dry. Yes, but I wasn't even buzzed at the time. It's like I paid for this ticket so I could drink for free. And then and you, I had to I had to like squirrel my way in for that third one. It just like didn't make any sense to me. And meanwhile, I'm sitting two seats in front of the shitter and our flight attendant was giving me free drinks the whole time. And that's why she We cut did me have off. to sit on the tarmac for a full hour. And, and I, a half. I think that's why she was giving them But it t- there was another guy back there she didn't give him to free, for free. So Were was, you schmoozing the flight time attendant? Out. Were you I mean Tyler <laughs> Arizona, different area code. You're so AZ. I mean, you were in bachelor party mode. Yeah. We were at a bachelor party. <laughs> I'm really glad that he was in bachelor party mode at the bachelor party. <laughs> yeah. I didn't funny. Irish goodbye once. You did tell me that that was top five, one of the drunkest nights you've ever had. Is no, just true? day. Do you still stand by that? I stand by it's top five, one of the most I've ever drank in a day. Like for sure. Because we started at 8 a.m. And went until 3 a.m. We did go till 3. And we were drinking the entire time. It wasn't like, uh, let's take a quick break and suck down some waters. It was, maybe I'll have a half a drink of water right here and then can just continue well, you, boozing. you could have been drinking water. <laughs> I, it wasn't. Which yeah, is the was, problem. What, what bachelor party do you go to where they have scheduled water breaks? Well, you know, like sometimes there's a lull between dinner and going out of like, let's chill for a second, then we'll go downtown. There was no chilling for a sec. No, dude. We just drank straight. Well, there would have been if our round would have taken four hours instead of six hours. <laughs> True. Yeah. There was so one built in. Through. Yeah, right. But regardless, it was a good time and I made it. And uh, I just, you know, I just can't shake the feeling that it's just, it's a great day to be alive. Mm-hmm. Cute Travis Tread. You just never know, you know. And then a couple weeks, we're right back at it. Wedding gang back together. Miles bachelor party will be the happiest you'll uh, ever be for the rest uh, of your life. A lot of a lot of dudes at the wedding all shooting each other the kind of the little snicker, like <laughs> I remember what we did on the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just tell them none stories. of these none of these fucking guys went through it, you know? And it'd make everyone super jealous. So well, Tyler, I think it's time we get you home safe and sound to your yeah. family. I think I'm going to Uber back. I was kind of hoping that the tow truck would maybe have a mail in rebate or something at the <laughs> price of that thing. Oh, so. sorry. What the? Let's see if I can. Jake well, Ryan, just mute you? I muted Ryan because he's blowing his nose next to the you know, mic the I whole episode. That. Mm-hmm. Well, I pushed You know, Jared would have hey, turned it up louder. So. <laughs> That's actually a power move by you. Also, next man up. There is Jared just going to take a vacation every weekend for the rest of his life. <laughs> I actually yes. think he has another one in like three weeks. I'm taking one this weekend. Nebraska. Huskers. Are you actually? Yeah. That close to my wedding? <laughs> <laughs> I had to sneak it in between the bachelor party what and What if wedding. you don't make it home in time? So what I do appreciate is you leaving that one weekend open in between bachelor party wedding so I could go to Nebraska. To kind of wrap up the bachelor party talk too, people really don't put bachelor parties close to their wedding anymore. No. Every time someone's like, oh, it's your bachelor party. Nice. When's the wedding? I'd be like, the 18th. And they'd be like, of this month? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they used to do bachelor parties the night before the wedding. Literally 12 hours beforehand. I don't know. So where where did we... I, earlier what this year, I went to a bachelor party that was three months before the wedding. My I went to months. a bachelor party that was six months before a wedding. Yeah. I think the movie The Hangover 
really kibosh the night before wedding. Yeah, it almost parties. like, oh, shit, maybe this isn't a good idea. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I do know someone that got punched and went to jail on the night before his wedding and they had to put <laughs> makeup on him at the wedding. That's fucking cool. Oof, dog. If if my older brother, after his bachelor party, if he would have had his wedding the next day, he would have had a big cut on his nose because he was drunk and <laughs> face plant face planted on the stair. <laughs> so maybe, yeah. But I think I gave myself I mean, I heal really quick. <laughs> you guys know that about me. <laughs> Slap a little neosporin on it and you're good to go. <laughs> Your bachelor party was a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking movie. Uh, it was a movie. Put us in the IMAX. Yeah. Uh, it's like kind of one of those things like, oh, yeah, that was. Do you remember the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dude. was so that was sick. crazy. Then, uh, you guys just should have been there. I can't wait for the bachelor party recap at the wedding, though. Every time you meet, you, you run into one of the guys that was there, you just talk about the bachelor party. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because that's all you know at mm-hmm. that point. Like, yeah, there's a couple guys there that I'd met for the first time. And that's all we're going to be able to talk about at the wedding. Yeah, I remember when Todd would be like, remember when I took off my shirt at that bar <laughs> and puked on that lady? and I went coyote ugly on their ass. Yeah. <laughs> Did the two-step on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'd be like, dude, that was so fucking funny. That was fucking nuts, dude. It was basically, have you ever seen the movie Project X? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when well, I skateboarded I, on the roof? Basically, da- Old Town Scottsdale looked like a scene out of Project X by the time we were done with that. <laughs> yeah, we lived Project X last week. We weekend. drank the town dry of whiskey and bush lights. <laughs> I don't, I, when we left, I don't think there, no, I checked with the mayor. There wasn't a single <laughs> fucking bush light or whiskey bottle left in Old Town Scottsdale. No, couldn't have been. I mean, I probably had six, seven. I mean, we'd had to go to the next county to just <laughs> even find a drop of alcohol. State, we'd had to go to either to uh, New Mexico or Texas. We'd had to smuggle it across the t- Mexican border. We'd had to drive to Tijuana. Yeah. Then it's not even bush lights anymore. It's just cervezas. Yeah. <laughs> bush cerveza. That's Spanish for beer, tub. Bush Ryan. beer, yeah. Yep, yeah. I got that one. Um. So. Glad we made it out. Made it out alive. It's perspective. Do you guys want to do this next year too? I don't get why we can't just go do a golf trip every year. I, I mean, I mean I, we should. I'm down. We can just pretend like we can. Why we do can, you have an anniversary for your wedding, but don't have an anniversary for your bachelor party? It's a good point. Very good point. It's a good point. And because now you're married. And, every, and everyone, but no, but everyone says. You don't remember anything from your wedding. It just goes flies by. Make sure to live in the moment. The precious prison, right? <laughs> Perspective. Right? I remember every second of the bachelor party. <laughs> so do I. Except for the one times that I was black the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember everything for, before I, noon. I remember everything from uh, except from noon to 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so many mental gymnastics I'm doing right now to try and make bachelor party anniversaries happen. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean the the issue is. Now someone can tell you, tell you, like, not tell you, but they can, like, recommend not going. Not going. Like, like on a golf trip every year. Because now you have to kind of answer to somebody or get their opinion on it, whereas before marriage, you didn't. And I'm not, I'm not in that, I'm not saying I'm in that. I know you're laughing because you're like, what is your... <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, you're no, like... No, I'm actually... Your wife doesn't let you go. No, she, she well, let me go, but I think that's the reason why a majority of people, not me, because my wife would let me do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the reason why people can't... Majority of people, not me, can't, can't have an anniversary bachelor party. You know? Because their buddies suck. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Got it. They my, my that would never though. happen to us. No, no. Our buddies don't suck. No. Well. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, it? We we can also just say it's work trip. We got we got work trip. Yeah. Tyler, Miles. Don't lie. Tell okay. the truth. Where's the first place we went after your near death experience? Holiday. 
We went to holiday gas stations. And what'd you get? I got this is classic Tyler. He gets this every time. I, I swear to God, every time we're on a road trip, we stop at holiday. Tyler, I, you've maybe had 10,000 of these in your lifetime. That's so how much you love them. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Tell the people what you love. Car washes. <sighs> Every time we go, I have to have one. He does. He well, and the amount of dirt that he got on my <laughs> truck in the ditch, and the grease from the wrecker, we had to go right to Holiday and get a car wash. Mm-hmm. And who doesn't love a clean car? When you're at Holiday grabbing your favorite snacks, don't forget a car wash. Wash all the gross stuff off your car whenever you want. Yuck! If you just sign up for the Holiday Car Wash Club. I'm a club member. That sounds clean. Um, who doesn't love a clean car? Rub a dub dub. I love a clean car. I I think that it. I don't want to say it because this is quite the claim, <laughs> but I would dare to say that they get my they get my truck squeaky clean. Ooh. Would it be also be safe to say that? And it's not my brakes that you hear. That's how clean it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's how clean, not my <laughs> shitty brakes. What were we going to say? Nothing. It it flopped in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're keeping those in. Yeah. It yeah. shows growth. A rare filler save. Nice. Be nice if you could do that in a regular part of the podcast, too. <laughs> we're more professional. Speaking of filler. <laughs> filler <laughs> holiday is not just your another filler gas station on the side of the road well technically you do fill up there. filler up yeah it's a you filler up but all i gotta say is don't pass gas filler up at holiday gas stations so get a car wash it's that time of year where everyone's sliding in the ditch losing control except for me <laughs> So you might as well get that puppy clean. No one wants to be sitting in the ditch and having a dirty car. <laughs> At least if you're going to slide into the ditch, have a clean car and be part of the holiday car wash club. Glad you guys didn't talk golf the whole or uh, it worked the whole time while we were there. Yeah. I didn't I, talk work a single fucking time. I didn't say anything. I told people I was an accountant. Did you? <laughs> yeah. They asked me what I, what, what I do for work and I would just lie so I didn't have to talk about work. That is smart. Yeah. Don't mix business with pleasure. Right. Even though business can be the most pleasurable thing. Well, ever. Honestly, though, like if I would have told. It's so pleasurable sometimes. If I would have told them that I was. are going right. If I would have told them that I was one of two of the bad boys of golf, they would have been on me like flies on shit. So They'd I had to like, lie. Where the fuck's the other guy? Yeah. But instead, I was like, hey, I'm an accountant, and that's my accountant friend over there. But if we released this podcast before the bachelor party, which I know couldn't have happened, <laughs> um, they would have been coming up to me and be like, oh, shit. Those two guys are hanging out with the uh, Peaput inventor. <laughs> <laughs> that guy invented the Peaput. Is, is that Professor Peaput? <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing Pee-pee. my handle to Professor Peaput on Instagram. <laughs> the Piss Putt. It's probably not even ava- available. Get the hey, go get that domain. Uh, yeah, you got pissputt.com. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> you could make a club. You could make a, I mean, they already make a club you can piss into. Yeah, <laughs> even like a club of people, <laughs> <laughs> like a club of I'm like, yeah, that just sounds like Craigslist <laughs> connection. <laughs> no, it's more practical than that. What is the, the piss putter? Why don't you just? With a people club or the people club, which so you just stick your dick in the end of a putter. It's yeah, it's just a tube, but it looks like a club. So you like hold it by your junk, so it looks like you're lining up for a shot. But really, your dick's in it and you're peeing. If I'm in the thick of it <laughs> and I'm holding a putter, people are gonna be like, "What is that's not?" They're gonna look harder. Why? Well, I'm it, trying to it, distract them from looking at my penis. <laughs> well, if you're, I mean, if you're on the verge of dribbling, that thing is overflowing in about two seconds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever like? <laughs> I'm not even getting it into the hole. It's going to go all over the rim. <laughs> There's nothing more. No and it's going to look like a, a a gas station hose. Honestly. <laughs> You think all that such a great visual? You think all that pee's going in the thing? No. 
No, I mean, you're wet in with the grass. My, with my laser <laughs> technology, it's also going to go in and it's going to be coming out faster than it can, f- than gravity's pulling it down. <laughs> so it's going to balloon the club out. It's going to be a whole thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe it won't work then. <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll find it along the way. R and D. I mean, this is. I mean, clearly, Ryan, you haven't done any of the work to do a business plan for this at all. No, so the, we're in the idea stage right now. I know that's an important stage, though, too. Yeah, you gotta work the kinks out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a good I idea. Mean, I mean, Having kinks kink could be a it? theme in this. Kinking it. You could kink it. We'll we'll workshop. All right. Well, I think that's enough piss talk for one day. What do you guys think? I uh, yeah, I think I've had my fill. <laughs> I, mean, I could go all day, but we can we can end it. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning into the Perspective Podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and remember that not every day is promised. So live each day like it's last, because YOLO, you only live once. So. <laughs> That was my moment of silence for Tyler almost Mm -hmm. passing away. Glad you're here, Tyler. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the You Betcha Radio podcast. Go follow us on patreon.com slash you betcha radio for an extra episode every single week. May your car stay on the road and may your pee not go on your pants. (laughs) Cheers, Ryan. Cheers. Oh my god. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah.